Welcome to this webinar on supports to help spend the funding allocated to each school through the Department of Education Schoolbook Grant 2022. This webinar is jointly hosted by Libraries Ireland and the Department of Education and supported by Children's Books Ireland. My name is Joan Ward of Libraries Development and the Local Government Management Agency, and together with my colleague Maeve Hackade, we will be coordinating the webinar. The presentations that will take place now will start with Assessing, Developing and Stocking Your School Library, presented by Dolores Casey from Cork County Library Service and Karen McCaig from Monaghan County Library Service. This will be followed by Every Child a Reader, presented by Elena Ryan and Emily Daly from Children's Books Ireland. And finally, Karen Murta from the Curriculum and Assessment Policy Unit in the Department of Education will cover the area of procurement. Questions can be asked via the question and answer button at the top of your screen at any stage during the presentations. Presenters will respond to questions via the Q&A facility throughout the webinar as much as possible, but there will also be some time at the end before we finish the hour long session to post more questions and to answer any questions not already addressed. And now let me hand over to Dolores Casey from Cork County Library Service. Thanks, Joan. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Dolores Casey, as Joan has already introduced me. I'm an executive librarian with Cork County Council Library, and my role is as children and school services librarian. So along with my colleague Karen McCaig from Monaghan County Library, we're going to do a presentation about um, assessing, developing and stocking your school library. So we'll go straight into that. Um, I suppose whether you have a school library or not already, you need to assess what you need or you need to assess what you have. And the main areas that you need to assess when you're when you're starting your new library or developing your current library is there are several areas. You have to assess the currency, the relevance, inclusion and diversity of your book stock and resources, the reading levels of your book stock and resources, the age appropriateness of every of your books, and if you need special collections. We'll go in, I'll go into those in more detail now. So under currency, um, we many non-fiction fact books go out of date quickly, as we know areas of technology and health, especially date and books um, go out of date. So it's always a good idea if the first step when you're checking your library, if you have a current library, is to check the publication date on the inside cover. Um, and definitely if something is at least five years out of date, it's it needs replacement. Um, popular books as well. Um, fiction books will also need replacement at times and especially popular books and subjects um, that are popular with the children, with non-fiction subjects that are popular with school children need to be replaced with newer editions if possible, because older tatty books tend to turn children off, especially if pages are missing. The next area that you really need to assess is the relevance of your stock. So you need to ensure that the books in your school library meet the needs of your school population and of course the school curriculum also. And in checking on those, you need to check on both the needs of the students and the teachers because the teachers need to be able to use the books as well in conjunction with the children at times, especially in areas like class novels. In, di in the area of diversity, is extremely important as we all know and there's some great reading lists available on the Libraries Ireland website and also Children's Ireland website and Elena will be talking about those lately but it's very important to check if your current library books are representative of your school population. You have to consider things like race and culture, gender and also abilities of the students in your school and then consider are there any other underrepresented areas in your school library book collection. Reading levels. Um, the picture here is of the Oxford Reading Tree graded read reading series and you're, everybody is probably familiar with graded readers, but they're a great way for enhancing literacy because they start from basic literary skill, literacy skills and work their way up to more confident reading. But in any library, it's always important to ensure that there's a mix of books for varying literacy needs and also language needs and interest levels graded. These graded readers, like I said, are available at different reading levels and there are lots of other series that Karen will discuss in more length in her presentation next. And I suppose what's important to remember in this case is reading age does not necessarily reflect the interest level of a child. And, and we'll move on then to the age appropriateness that follows directly on from that, ensuring books that you provide are suitable for the age groups. 
And as I said already, the reading age doesn't necessarily reflect the interest level. And the reason I use this graphic here is just to demonstrate that you've got all of the different levels. All of the covers are equally um, as attractive looking. And but obviously something like the suitcase, which is a picture book, won't be suitable for a child of an, an older age. Whereas maybe something like Animal Farm by George Orwell, which is a simplified Barrington Stoke version, that's the cover displayed there, would be suitable for them and maybe at their closer to their reading age as well. So special collections, um, just I, it's important to check that if there are any special collections of books that needed to be added to a school library. This would be most important really in secondary schools where areas such as local history, language or music collections for CBA preparation and leaving certificate projects in secondary schools are necessary for students and also staff special staff collection of uh, teaching resources may be useful for teachers and Karen will go into more detail as well about these in a moment. So I suppose whether you have a collection already or developing your collection, the most important thing to remember is that weeding of books and key, an ongoing process of um, checking your collection is extremely important. So you need to keep your book collection fresh and this very handy graphic here on the left hand side of the screen gives an idea and um, gives a fair idea of how to, to go to, about weeding. And if stands for foster, does your book collection foster love re of reading? or does it reflect your diverse population of students? E, does it reflect an equitable global view, nice and diverse? S, does it support the curriculum, the curricula in the school? And H, is it a high quality text? So by doing that, you're going to maintain a current useful and dynamic collection, adapting to changing needs and the interests of students and teachers while accommodating changes in the school curriculum as well. That needs to be always an eye kept to that. And also by weeding and keeping your collection under control, you make the best use of your floor and shelf space. And as we all know, that's often a limited um, a limited space in school libraries. So I just want to thank you for listening. And if anybody wants to make contact, my email address is there. And now I'll pass over to my colleague, Karen. Thanks a million. Thanks very much, Dolores. I'll just share my screen now. I need to unshare, sorry now. No. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Um, yes, so sorry, as Dolores said, my name is Karen McCaig. I'm an executive librarian with Monning County Libraries. Um, I'm going to talk you through a bit about stock selection and just, um, I suppose, showcase some of the fabulous books that are out there and um, that you might not necessarily be that familiar with, um, but hopefully you'll uh, be more familiar with them by the end of the presentation. So first of all, I suppose, where to start? Um, really depending on your budget. I know that there's probably some small schools joining us here this evening, it's probably some larger schools. As you know, you're getting 21 euro per child, so you could be getting a thousand euro to spend, you could be getting 18 or 19 thousand euro to spend. So um, it's really deciding what way you want to divide that up. So first of all, we have reading for skill or reading for pleasure. So we're going to look at reading for skill first. Um, so look, as librarians, we always want reading to believe to be for pleasure, but we do understand obviously that the classroom setting is different and that children need to develop those basic reading skills. Um, but children do need to still enjoy reading. They're never going to want to read if what they're reading isn't of any interest to them. So it is important that there's books there um, to pique their interest. Um, again, depending on your budget, you may want to opt for fiction or non-fiction, a mix of both. Um, you might want to look at the graded reading programmes that Dolores referred to earlier. So um, if your budget is tight, so if you are a smaller school um, and you want to concentrate maybe more on the reading for pleasure end of things, um, don't forget that you have a block loan option from your local library as well. So you can you supplement your own school library with public library material as well. So these are just a sample of some of the reading programmes that are available and um, there's obviously quite a lot more than this, but these would be some of the more popular ones, I suppose, that we've seen through our school's library service. Again, if you're not familiar with them and want to have a look at someone before you commit your budget to, you know, buying a whole collection of these. Um, again, use your local public library to request some of these books. Um, if they're not in the branch itself, you can request them and have a look at them. So really try before you buy and, and commit all your money to them. Um, 
you can buy these in bundles. So as you can see here, say, for example, the Hero Academy, rather than trying to spend your budget by buying books individually, it can actually be quite time consuming to go through all that. Whereas if you pick a reading program that you think will work with your school, um, you can buy it in bundle sets. You can see, for example, here, there's one Euro Academy. You can get all the 78 books for about 430 euro. Um, Story Sparks is something similar. Or if you have a larger budget, um, you could go for something like this where you can get rid of 5,000 euro with, the, with one go. Um, Again, you would obviously want to check out the books themselves before you commit to buy something like this, but it's just something to consider. Um, graded reading for primary school, as I've shown there, there's there's quite a lot of options. When you move to secondary school, it's there just aren't the same level of options. Um, of course, you could use the primary school programs, but um, just be aware of the perception of the children that are going to be picking up those books. So you can see here we've got two book covers on the screen. One is a reading age of six. The two of them actually are a reading age of six. One is designed for teenagers. One is obviously designed for younger children. So you can imagine if you have a 14 or 15 year old boy in secondary school with a reading age of six, he's really not going to want to pick up Life of a Dog. In fact, he'd probably be a wee bit embarrassed um, being seen with something like that. Whereas you can see here, the one called Web, it's a Barrington Stoke book. It's been designed specifically to have an interest level or an interesting story for a teenager, but with the reading ability of a younger child. Um, Barrington Stoke, I think every librarian in the country would recommend Barrington Stoke as high low readers. So again, the stories are designed for older children. They've got fast paced storylines and they've got characters that they can relate to, but they do have um, that lower reading age ability. But it builds young people's confidence in that they can pick up a book and read it in full rather than picking up a book and really struggling with it and getting you know, a bit disheartened with their own ability. So Barrington Stoke also do reading packs as well. So again, you can have a look. If you just go back to that previous slide, when you're looking at the Barrington Stoke books, you can see that it gives you the reading age as well as the interest level. So these are reading age eight, reading age nine, but the interest level then is for teens. This is just a sample of the packs that you can buy from Barrington Stoke as well. So you can see here you're getting 50 different titles. Um, again, just something to consider if you have a good budget and you're looking to buy collections rather than individual books. If you're lucky enough to have Accelerated Reader Program in your school, um, the world's your oyster really when it comes to books because all of the books can be, or a lot of the books can be kind of turned from reading from pleasure into reading for skill because they have those AR numbers attached to them. And the Book Nest and Sligo are the only authorised AR supplier in Ireland. So when you buy from those under the AR programme, um, they come pre-labeled with the AR number on it and everything. So it makes it much easier for the children to decipher which books are for them and which books are at their reading level. Um, the, the fund, as far as I know, the grant funding doesn't cover the software program or the license for AR, so you would need to have that in your school already before you would be buying these books. Then obviously nonfiction is very important for any school library. Um, I suppose with the dawn of the internet, nobody's buying big sets of Encyclopedia Britannica or anything like that anymore because information is changing so regularly. But something like this is fabulous to have in your library. And um, the DK Encyclopedias, they're so packed full of information, but they're done in a really bite-sized way with lots of fabulous graphics. So if a child isn't particularly a reader, they can still dip in and out of these books um, and get get the information that they need. Then we've got things like the Little People Big Dreams series of biographies. Again, if you have a good budget um, to buy these as a collection would just be so impactful in any school library. And you can see there's quite a diverse range of books here as well, which is always important. Um, because sometimes when you're just buying individual books here and there, whenever you put them on the library shelf, they just don't have that, I suppose, care of appeal that you know that you, you're not maybe drawn to one single book. Whereas if you had these on a lovely display, um, I can imagine there'd be lots of takers for them. Again, these books are really, really popular in public libraries. Um, you have the O'Brien series here focusing on Irish sports stars um, and then the ultimate football heroes as well. We find these are particularly good for young boys. I mean, it's probably not a gender correct thing to say, but um, they really when boys can relate to the characters, they seem to be more willing to take out the book and read them in full. With regards to secondary school, obviously you have separate needs to primary schools. Um, when you're working with reading for skill, 
you know, the, as I mentioned, it's all about perception. Whenever the children are proficient readers and they just need information, um, again, the world's your oyster. You know, there's such a broad range of fiction and non-fiction out there to choose from for, for young adults, essentially, that are at that reading ability. But if you don't have a school library, perhaps you could consider little classroom libraries. So something like this for an art classroom or cookery book collection for home economics. Um, woodwork books for the woodwork room. So you don't necessarily have to have a library in your school to have small libraries of books. Then the other thing obviously that we want to promote is reading for pleasure. Um, we find it's very, very easy for children and maybe for teachers to revert to those well-known names like David Williams, Rose Dahl, JK Rowling. You know, these are the, the books that have big marketing budgets so people know about them, but they may not necessarily be the best examples of children's writers out there. Um, so I love these graphics from Books for Topics. So if you love David Williams or, you know, if you have children asking you, I've read David Williams, what should I read? They have fabulous recommendations for something similar, but by other fantastic authors. So you can print out these wee posters and uh, put them in your school library so that if kids are interested in reading Harry Potter, they've read them and they're looking for something similar, that they have other points of reference then as well. So as I said, these are from Books for Topics, but Children's Book Ireland also have a fabulous reading guide as well called Read Those, Read These. Um, Elaine will probably talk about that after me. So you can see here we've Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which leads me on to talking about graphic novels. So graphic novels can often be overlooked as a way of promoting literacy. Sometimes they're just seen as comics and maybe not that important, but they really are um, have a major role in promoting literacy. And you can see here in the graphics some of the reasons why. And just to let you know, graphic novels generally do have a word count of about 20,000 to 55,000. So that's the same as a decent chapter book for, for a, an older child. Um, and the visual prompts then can really help reluctant readers or struggling readers to decipher the story. So the one here we have is Romeo and Juliet, which can be quite a hard text for anybody to get through. But you can imagine if somebody is having difficulty with, with literacy and um, how hard it would be for that. So the graphic novels definitely have a huge role to play. Audiobooks are also something else you might like to consider. I personally love them. They're a great way to get stories into you if you haven't the time to sit and read, or maybe if you're a child and you have an inclination to sit and read, you've still been exposed, exposed to stories. And often it's time, it's stories above your reading age. Um, they're great for introducing new vocabulary and for getting the imagination stirring. And maybe if they enjoy listening to a book that they want to, you know, maybe read more in a series or whatever, that it would encourage them to pick up a paper book as well, rather than just stick with the audio. So definitely something to consider. But again, if your budget doesn't allow it, don't forget we have the Box Libraries app with over 40,000 audio books that you can download for free. And um, so that you can have that as your backup as well. Another thing to consider, as Dolores mentioned, is having diversity in your collection. So really, I suppose when I was growing up, all the books were about little white children living idyllic lives in English countryside and having all those adventures. But really and truly, that's not the way life is anymore. So I think things started to change maybe with Jackie Milson, other authors like that, who started to bring in real world characters to children's books and real world situations that not every child was being brought up in an idyllic home. Um, and not every child was white. Um, so this study by Penguin um, really shines a light on the lack of diversity in some schools, in their reading collections and on their curriculum. So if you're looking to, I suppose, make your, your library collection more representative, I would really recommend this um, Lit and Colour reading list for both primary and secondary schools. Now, these are only a sample of the titles, but there's quite a few more there that you can choose from. And again, if you're buying these as a collection, it's going to be much more impactful than just one or two books on the shelf. Another thing you might like to consider with regards to representation is LGBT stories. Um, again, up until the early 2000s, it was actually illegal to have LGBT characters in children's books in the UK. And I suppose here in Ireland, we would have got a lot of our books from UK publishers. Thankfully, that's changing. And, you know, we're able to showcase children um, in all their 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 ways and means um, and interests. So these stories, they may just have 
the characters might have a girlfriend, you know, maybe two girlfriends, two boyfriends, um, a child might have two mothers, two dads, um, just simple things like this. This fabulous book a fox called, that Fox called Herbert is about a rabbit who wants to be a fox. So just introducing that simple idea to children from a young age that not everybody is what they seem or what they look like and um, that people may be feeling different inside. So again, we have lots of other fabulous recommendations in the public libraries guide, which we we'll point to at the end. I'm going to fly through this because I know I'm going over time. Other options to consider as well is books exploring topics like autism. Um, Frankie's World should be in every school library. It's a beautiful graphic novel explaining autism. Um, again, lots of different titles. Um, these collections here I really love as well. So if you feel that there's a lack of empathy maybe in your classroom or your school or community, empathy can be learned and it can be learned by reading and popping yourself self in other people's shoes. And Empathy Lab have developed some fabulous reading guides that highlight this in books. Um, so you have things like The Star Outside the Window, which is about a young girl whose mother was a victim of domestic violence. Um, you have things that are like dealing with anger in children. Um, also it's a huge amount. We definitely recommend um, checking out those titles as well. So there's about, I think about 220 books in the Empathy Lab book list. So again, a nice comprehensive collection if you want to spend your money on something like that. Another thing to consider then is a staff library, if you have the money for that. Um, how fabulous would it be to have a resource like that for teachers in your school? So CPD is obviously a huge part of everybody's career development, um, especially for teachers where they're dealing with different different children coming in all the time um, and the different anomalies or behaviours that they might have. So um, we really recommend outside the box learning resources. They're based in Kildare, I think it is. Um, they've got a fabulous collection of books for teachers uh, covering some of the topics listed here. And then obviously we have our services to schools through your local library. So without needing to spend any money, you can come for class visits, block loans, educator cards, um, class novels. We have program events throughout the year, as well as our online resources. So I mentioned Barbox earlier, that's our ebooks and audiobooks. We have Press Reader, which gives you free access to newspapers from across the world, which would be brilliant for students of languages. Um, you can pop on and read the daily newspaper in French, German, Spanish, whatever it might be. Um, Universal Class there for online classes and Libby for digital magazines as well. So there's lots of things you can you can get from the library without spending your money. And finally, just to direct you some to some more reading guides. Um, the Public Library Resource Guide has been developed by a group of public librarians. Um, they've come up with fabulous titles from a whole range of resources or a whole room. A whole range of topics, I should say. Um, Books for Topics has some brilliant resources as well. The Reader Teacher is a great one to follow. And then obviously the Children's Book Ireland Guides, which leads me nicely to introduce our next speaker, Elena and Emily from Children's Book Ireland. And they're going to take you through some of the amazing reading guides that they've developed over the past number of years. So thank you very much. Um, as I said, my name is Karen McKaig. You can contact me at kmckaig at mononcoco.ie. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thanks so much for that handover, Karen, and a lovely smooth segue uh, into what I'm going to be speaking about. So um, I am going to be talking to you today about some of the reading guides that we've put together, as Karen mentioned. And, telling you a little bit about what it is that Children's Books Ireland does um, and telling you a bit about our vision and mission, um, it, hopefully giving you some signposts so that you know you know your class best, you know the group that's in your school best and we'll just let you know what's there for you and you can play around with those guides. So everything that we've developed and that I'll talk to you about here is free to download on our website childrensbooksireland.ie. Um, so if you can click onto the next slide Maeve, our vision is every child a reader. And that tells you uh, everything about what it is that we do. We really, and Karen made a very helpful distinction between reading for skill versus reading for pleasure earlier. And we really believe that if we can find books that children love and make reading a sustainable habit for them, 
for them that they'll get to reap all those benefits that Reading for Skill will bring and that literacy and numeracy, that improved mental well-being, that capacity for empathy will all come along with that. So we choose all the books that go into our reading guides based on excellence. We only include things in there if we think they're going to be really brilliant for children and young people to read. And the part of our mission, I suppose, that this falls under is to share our expertise and enthusiasm with adults who guide and influence children. So that's, you know, librarians, teachers, um, families of all kinds. So moving on to the next slide, we've created a number of guides which are a really good starting point when you're setting up a library. So creating a reading culture in your school, very much about building that buzz, building that excitement about books, ways to get your students excited and enthused about reading. Reading group guidelines is for if you want to set up clubs or maybe paired reading groups between older and younger classes. And then setting up a school library is your basics about putting in place a system. Um, and a lot of the tips that you'll have heard from our pals at the public libraries here this evening. So if you visit our website at childrensbooksireland.ie, the tab to click on is resources and ideas, and there's an awful lot of what I'm going to talk about there. So on the next slide, I want to do a quick scroll through a portion of our website, uh, which is called Class Reads. Now, we were frequently asked about class novels, novels that classes can read together. And we put together class reads as a means of recommending amazing books that classes can read right from junior infants up through secondary school, first year and fourth year. We commissioned a series of videos, as you can see here, some of them for playing directly to your class, some of them creative tips for teachers with writers like Dave Rudden and Moira Kivon. And when you download the PDFs, you'll see that there are 24 books in each. And what we do is we've chosen books that we hope will connect with students that we hope teachers will find useful, that will have relevant themes, and we hope that you as teachers will feel supported with useful resources here. So every book in this gets a short review recommending it, and then we've chosen a small number of the books to break them out and have themes to explore, quizzes, further resources. Some of those might be directing you to videos with the author, could be a research project, creative writing, design a cover, all kinds of things and playful ways to engage with the books. On the next slide, you'll see an image of one of our junior juries, and this is particularly relevant today as we announced the winners today of the 2022 KPMG uh, Children's Books Ireland Awards. And the awards is something that can be a really useful resource year round because the junior juries programme have their own activity pack. So for each year, we have 10 books or up to 10 books on our awards shortlist. And we break out those books so that there are activities again correlating to all of them. And the idea of the junior juries is really to get children exposed to books that they might not otherwise pick up and to make sure that they're seeing Irish talent, authors and illustrators based in Ireland or Irish authors and illustrators abroad. And again, the really playful creative activities in English and Irish for children of all ages from picture books up through secondary schools. So this year we had over 10,000 children participating in almost 350 groups and that will be opening each January for registration. Um, you'll see on the next slide that We've got the resource pack and the artist videos um, on our website. So when you scroll down this page, as you'll see, um, we commission a video from each shortlisted artist so that you can hear directly from them about the book. And oftentimes we find that students can find that really engaging and that will it, it will entice them to pick up the book, particularly when you're hearing from illustrators and seeing them drawing and creating those characters. Um, and you can play that on our YouTube channel or directly in our website. On the next slide here, you will see uh, another one of the the inside uh, spreads of this resource. So questions for before you begin, while you're reading, after you've read. We love questions for older readers when it comes to the picture books because we think they're such a lovely format to study, even to look at the illustration and to keep them exposed to those visual texts. And as Karen said earlier, graphic novels, comics, picture books, we feel you can't age out of those. So they're a wonderful resource for all ages. And on the next slide here, you can see we have so many of these resources available from years going back that we bound up five years of these resources all together. One pack for secondary schools, one pack for primary schools. So these are the best books by Irish authors and illustrators and lots of resources to support you for using them in the classroom and to energise and inspire your students. On the next page, you'll see our KPMG Reading Hero Award. And this is just maybe a bit of motivation for your students as you're building that buzz that you can nominate them as really our reader of the year. Uh, in association with KPMG and we, we love to recognise young people. They tend to get um, trophies for sports and not for reading and we wanted to make a change there. So if you have any amazing readers in your class, watch out for these nominations next year. 
And on the next slide, you'll see we really want you to keep up to date with what's out there. So uh, each year we publish three issues of Inish magazine that goes out in the post. Uh, so if we click again, you'll see three issues of Inish goes out in the post to our members. And on the next slide, we've got a website um, that is available to everyone and we redesigned it, as you'll see in the, the little scroll video here. When you go into our recommendations, there are lots of ways that you can scroll. Hopefully it's really user friendly um, and there are lots of ways to search the books that you're looking for. So we update these reviews all the time. They're really current. You can search, as you can see here, by uh, theme and genre, so art and creativity, diversity and inclusion. Uh, by category, so it might be poetry, picture books, fiction, graphic novel, by age range from zero up to young adults, and then you can sort by newest books first, and that'll include all of our reviews, reading guides and themed reading lists. You can also search the website if there's something particular you're looking for, you're looking for books about horses, you're looking for superhero books, so there are keywords here that you can use, and as you can see you can tab through the different uh, ways of scrolling through this website. On the next slide, you'll see our themed lists, and these have been really uh, very much requested by schools over the last number of years. So you can see here the Together with Refugees list that we developed with the UNHCR, the High Commission on Refugees. Um, that's for Refugee Reading Week each year. And again, uh, this is the wee video that you can see scrolling down so that you can catch some of the other themes here from Rainbow Reads, which is LGBTQ books, uh, to Illness, uh, we have books about starting school, books about superheroes, positive first experiences, uh, read those, read these, as Karen mentioned, is very much for those who have run out of Williams or Wimpy Kid to read and are looking for something different. And then things like graphic novels, books for Shat and the guess. So there are over 30 of those lists that you can scroll through that we hope will be useful. We also develop reading guides, as you'll see on the next slide, and these are some of the ones that focus on the best books of the year. So a whole roundup again in English and Irish, just brilliant books we think are uh, really great to read. And on the next slide, we do some reading guides that are very much focusing on Irish authors and illustrators. So we know oftentimes in schools, folks might be fans of big names like Owen Colfer and Derek Landy, but you mightn't be so aware, uh, particularly of lots of debuts who are coming through. So this guide, Deliver the Joy of Reading and its predecessor called Books Make Things Better, really focus on those uh, Irish artists. On the next one, we've got some games, um, the Any Book Book Club. So once you've got your library in situ and you're looking at kind of how to engage students with it, the Any Book Book Club is a lot of games that don't require a printer and that works with any book that you have in your school. So again, just building up that confidence, that fluency, getting uh, kids with books into their hands. And on the next one, again, one of our most popular reading guides and one of the ones that was most requested is called Mind Yourself. So we refer to this as a first aid kit for worries. It's very much about mental health and well-being under a number of themes. There are over 400 reviews in here, again, in Irish and English for all ages. And we partnered with ISPCC and Jigsaw to make sure that we were covering the right themes and topics and the ones that were most relevant for children and young people. So on the next slide, you'll see just a quick run through of what's in there. This is a section on understanding feelings and emotions. Uh, if we click again, you'll see that there's a shamrock on Mary Murphy's here, denoting that that's an Irish artist. And uh, if you click again, you'll see there's an editor's choice here. So those are books that we especially recommend. Um, the next spread is fears and phobias. Um, you've got again for the next slide come some kind of older books. So including heavily illustrated chapter books, graphic novels, verse novels, all kinds of formats. And it's really about finding the right book at the right time for a child who might be struggling or for their pals um, so that they can better understand what's going on. So on the next slide, you'll see a whole list of the themes that are in this guide from understanding feelings and emotions all the way down to general well-being. Um, and we wanted to cover as many things in here as we possibly could. And as I said, ISPCC and Jigsaw have backed us up on, on this with their expertise. So um, the next thing I want to show you is the resource pack that goes with this guide. And that's really, we understand that it can be tough to have conversations about mental health and well-being in the classroom. We want you to feel as supported as you can in order to find your way into the books with your class. And this is a way of doing that. So um, the next slide shows you some of the videos that we have commissioned to go with that. Again, amazing artists like Ashwin Chaco, Juliette Saumond, Myra Zepp, uh, Saif Devlin. And if you engage with those videos and you like the artists, you can follow up and find their books that are featured in the guide as well. Our next reading guide is called Free To Be Me. Uh, we spoke a bit about diversity and inclusion earlier, and we really wanted to be as inclusive as we possibly could, um, looking at the characters on the page for all ages. So 
Uh, as you'll see on the next slide, there are 368 books reviewed in this with a read also against each one of those. And if we scroll right to the end, you'll see 30,000 copies of this were published and one was sent to every school in the country. So there might be one knocking around your staff room or you might find some extras in your local library because these were available in every library authority in the country when we published it last October. Um, Free to be me's themes again are numerous because we wanted to be as inclusive as possible. So we started uh, with disability, as you'll see on the next slide. Uh, we started with the Equal Status Act and we went all the way through to socioeconomic status because we really wanted every child and every family to be pictured so that we talk a lot about mirrors and windows. You want for a child to be able to see themselves in a book, but you also want them to be able to explore somebody else's life that might be quite different to theirs without the burden of education being on someone and making them feel different. So these books we feel are hugely important uh, in order to get different viewpoints. And again, that development of empathy, the ability to step into someone else's shoes. So I want to show you just a few spreads from this guide. This one um, we have organised by age rather than by theme, because we want to recognise that intersectionality, that people aren't just one thing. They, they may be a person of colour and a wheelchair user. There may be something around religion as a theme in the story. And, you know, we wanted, uh, as you'll see on the next page, to make sure that we included Largaelga, books by Irish authors and illustrators. Um, and on the next one, again, you'll see books like Heartstopper are included there. So graphic novels that have been turned into uh, TV adaptations since we published this guide and that may be very much popular in secondary schools. Uh, the resource pack to go with this guide, as you'll see, has 44 books broken down into activities for the classroom. We have a primary and a secondary school pack available free to download. And the next slide will just show you a little bit of a look on the inside of that. Um, so that you can see the way that's laid out. And again, a bit of background about the book so you understand the themes and always an activity that can be quite hands on. And um, some of them require absolutely nothing but your imagination. And some of them are very much kind of art and craft projects. We really feel uh, very strongly about access to reading and that every child should be able to read something that they're interested in. On the next spread, you'll see that as part of the Free to Be Me project, we developed a database of accessible formats. So if a book that's reviewed in the guide is available in large print or audio or uh, there's a reader available for it, we also developed a database of languages. So if a child doesn't have English as a first language and you can find the book in a language that suits their family. And we developed an accessible version of the reading guide. So you'll see on the next page, we just stripped out some of the information. So if a child or indeed a teacher wants to read through the guide, um, there's a zoomed in version on the next slide so that you can just see it's a little bit cleaner plain English, very simple to read, but it gets all that information across. The last few things I want to show you, uh, one is the Bold Girls Guide, which is very much about strong girls and women. We developed this in 2018 for the centenary of women's suffrage. And again, this has a resource pack to go with it so that you can explore those books and uh, have those conversations about equality in the classroom. Uh, next one, Small Print, is called uh, called Small Print because it's all about picture books uh, for our smallest readers. And it was originally designed for uh, early learning care settings, but actually it's developed around the Ashter framework. So it's perfect for junior and senior infants at school. You can see on the next page, we've got Skunkogat Smoreen, which is an Irish language picture book and uh, picture books come in all shapes and sizes. So some of them rhyme, some don't, they're in English, they're in Irish. Some of them are fact books. Some of them are very interactive. A book like You Choose is included here. And we give you the ties to the Ashter curriculum framework so you can really see what it's doing in your classroom, but we've kept the activities very playful as well. Last thing that I want to mention, as I said, we have a partnership with the UNHCR and because there are so many refugees now that we're welcoming uh, from Ukraine, this might be really useful, particularly for upper end second, upper end primary schools or maybe first, second year in secondary school. On the next page, you'll see we designed this actually for uh, partners to go in, for corporate volunteers to go in, but the activities are perfect for the classroom. We've chosen some really extraordinary books and this is something that, again, can encourage conversations about how it might feel to have to leave your country at short notice, to leave it behind you in dangerous circumstances. Um, and again, that development of empathy, as well as these books just being brilliant stories and really gorgeous books. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Emily Daly. Uh, she's got a lot of the practical supports for when you come to purchasing your books. And she's going to talk you through some of the downloadable spreadsheets that we have available for you to support your book buying for your library. Thanks so much. Perfect, I'm just going to share my screen.
So hopefully everyone can see my screen OK now. So basically um, to find these downloadable lists, you're going to go to our website, Children's Books Ireland. And if you go into news and events, um, our most recent article there, second most recent after the awards today, um, is making the most of your school library book grant. So you're going to head in there. Um, there's lots of information there about um, the grant, but you're going to scroll down to these lists here. So basically we've put together downloadable purchasing lists to make it much easier when you're ordering your books from whatever supplier it is that you choose. So we split them up into primary and secondary school. And then again, we've divided that into juniors and seniors. Um, if your school only caters, say, for junior infants to second class, um, or maybe if you go the full spread, then you'll work across um, the two sheets. So I'm going to open up um, just a sample for you here. So hopefully you can see this all OK. So this is our um, this one here is for primary school and it's for the senior end. So you can see on the first sheet it tells you that this Excel is for third, fourth, fifth and sixth class of primary school. So you know you're on the correct sheet. And um, this is the most important sheet at the start. Just make sure you understand how everything works. Um, so basically um, the guidelines are that you're going to have 21 euro to spend per pupil. And um, so we say approximately from experience from us ordering books for schools ourselves, that would be about two books per pupil. But you know, once you have your tally at the end and you send it to your supplier, they'll give you the full quote then and you can rearrange it if you need to. Um, so that means that, for example, if you had 100 students in third to sixth class, then you would be ordering approximately 200 books. And so you would pick 200 books from this Excel. So um, like Karen was saying, there are a lot of the different categories. You need to kind of ensure there's a balance between picture books, graphic novels, poetry, nonfiction. And so to make it easier for you, we've divided um, the books into those categories down here in the tabs. So you can go across those um, and then you know I'm on this particular page, I am picking nonfiction or I'm picking comics and graphic novels. Um, and then it just explains here that in the first column is where you're going to put in how many you want to order. So it kind of works like an ordering form. So for example, if you were in nonfiction, you might say, oh, this book sounds great, incredible jobs you've probably never heard of. I'm going to order a whole set of these. So you can enter like I am here 30, but maybe there's a book you only want to order one copy of. So you put one and you notice now that I've put in 30 and one, if you scroll down to the very bottom, it will actually tally that for you to make your life much easier. There's a lot of books on this particular sheet, but you can see there it comes to 31. Um, and then if I was to add another one, it comes to 32. If you make a mistake, it's no problem. Just change it back to zero. Um, so then um, something else you can do um, if you're really comfortable with Excel is that you can filter by columns. So I'll come back to that at the end. But the next thing then just to look at here is to explain how we've categorized um, each individual page. So they're actually categorized according to the different categories that Elena mentioned. Um, so basically all our reading guides, our reading lists, our resource packs, these are all highlighted. So it makes it much easier that if you are particularly interested in mental health, well, then you can focus on anything that's highlighted as mind yourself, for example. So just very quickly, if we were in the illustrated book section, for example, here, you can see all the ones that have been highlighted as mind yourself and you can see which particular section or theme of mind yourself they are. Another thing that we've done here um, is that we've highlighted in green anything that's Irish because that's something a lot of teachers ask us for. So if the title is highlighted in Irish, it's Irish language and you'll kind of know by the language of the title. But if the author illustrator is highlighted in green, then that also um, means that they're Irish based. The same with the publisher. And another thing we've highlighted that um, Karen brought up as well was Barrington Stoke books are particularly popular because they're high low readers and they're dyslexia friendly. So we've highlighted that as well um, to make it clear to you which books are Barrington Stoke. Um, so then the final thing is that if you were comfortable with filtering, it's something you wanted to try, you don't have to do it, you can just scroll right through the page, um, is that you can use these up here, kind of like on our website that Elena showed you, you can pull down your Dropbox menu and you can say, OK, I'm particularly interested in the free to be me reading guide, which is all about diversity and inclusion. So just unselect all things and then you're going to select free to be me and apply your filter and it will pull them all up for you and then you can enter your numbers. Um, but if you then decide actually want to add some mind yourself books here, you'll clear your filter and then you'll apply mind yourself. And then now you have mind yourself. So the very last thing then is just that once you're sending it to your supplier um, to get it priced up and check your availability, it's just important to make sure that you clear your filter because they might miss some of the books um, that you picked. So that's um, me um, and I'm going to hand over now to Karen Murtha from the Curriculum and Assessment Policy Unit in the Department of Education and Skills. Hi, um, 
Thanks, Emily. Um, I, just to start off, um, the payment of um, the 20 million grant monies are for the purchase of books, audio books and, and other um, material to increase literacy resources within, within the schools. Um, the payment of the grant monies will be issued to all primary and post-primary schools in the free education system next week. So that means that each school apart from the ETB schools will receive the grant monies directly. For ETB schools, the grants are paid um, directly to your ETB and because um, this is the way all, all funding or grants are paid um, to the ETB sector. Um, and just to say that the grant monies are for the purchase of literacy resources. They cannot be used, for example, to purchase, say, fixtures or fittings for a library. Um, it, 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 it is to increase the literacy resources. So the payment is 21 euros per pupil or student. So that's the pupils in primary and the students in post-primary schools. There's no cap on the amount of money. So for example, if a school has 100 pupils, they get paid for 100 pupils. Similarly, if a school has 900 students, they get paid for that 900 students. For some of the grants that are paid, for the um, there's a cap put on it um, up to a certain amount. But for this, it's 21 euros per, per learner. So um, I just start off now on um, in relation to public procurement. So that, as you will, as you're aware, all all schools, as with all kind of public sector and civil service, are um, obliged to um, adhere to public procurement. Um, so. That, for within schools, the board of management must establish a set of um, procedures which governs purchasing, and these should be set out. Um, their arrangements for, say, tendering um, and buying of goods, payment of invoices to suppliers, and the maintenance of accounting records that thereafter. Um, the rules for these are clearly set out in the guidance for schools on good procurement practices, which are available to download from the schools procurement unit um, website and the, the, the link is there on the screen. All purchases must be made in compliance with public procurement procedures um, because it ensures best value for money. Written quotes should be sought and a full record of the procurement retained for future reference and examination in accordance with public procurement rules. We are developing a procurement fact sheet and that will be issued next week when we um, when we start disseminating the monies to schools. So basically, when you get your monies it, it next week, we will be emailing out a fact sheet to every school um, which details um, kind of um, advice around public procurement. So if we would just move on to slide two there. Um, so for support is available um, for, for schools in, in kind of a, a couple of different places. Um, from the school's procurement unit, um, this is through their, their website, um, www.spu.ie, or you can email them on procurement support at spu.ie. The school's procurement unit, it's a central support resource for providing guidance to all primary and post-primary schools on any procurement related issue. And the school's procurement unit, it delivers its, its free advice and it provides practical support to schools in order to help you achieve improvements in your um, procurement processes, practices and the outcomes of those procurement processes. Um, as I said before, th there is, is that helpful guide that's available on, on their website. The Office of, Pub of Government Procurement also provides support and information and they can be found at www.ogp.gov.ie. The, the type of advice that they in, um, have on their website includes um, procurement guidelines and templates for requests for tenders. Just to note that, they, as I said before, the ETB schools, um, while their grants are paid directly to their ETB, the ETB schools are also supported in their procurement activity by their local ETB administrative office. Um, if you just go on to the third slide there, please. Um, so this is just some kind of um, information about when you're putting your request for tender um, in together. So you need to be very clear in stating what you want. You need to set your specification and requirements um, in a very clear manner with no ambiguity. This is to give the tenderers um, the kind of best idea of, of, of what you're looking for and that they can respond then with, with 
um, a, a quote and um, that includes everything that you're asking for. You need it's important to avoid uh, any misinterpretations and um, if you're clear in what in what you're asking for, it will um, diminish the, the chance of questions being asked for you and also getting the products that you don't you don't want. Um, the award criteria that you set out in your request for tender um, is is kind of it's a statement to the market about how you value the, the goods or services that you want. In, in, in the case of the book grant schemes, it will be goods that you're buying. Um, price is an important aspect, as we all know, but sometimes the cheaper um, option isn't always the best. You need to think about the quality um, of the product you're getting. Um, you need to think about customer care, delivery and supports um, as well. But when, you, when you're thinking about what award criteria to put in your request for tender, you also need to look at how you measure each one. So say price is easy, there's a formula for working it out, but how do you measure customer care and at what care do you want? So you really need to think about, do you need any follow up on this? Possibly, maybe you do or maybe you don't when you're, when you're buying books, but obviously delivery would, would be one of the things that, that you're, um, would be important when you're purchasing um, books and other um, e-books and, and um, other literacy resources. If you don't want something, if you're if you don't want customer care, if you're not going to measure that, then don't make it an award criteria. So just to note that every tender must now include green public procurement considerations. Um, so this is a process where public um, entities um, seek to source goods and services or works which re um, have a reduced environmental impact throughout their life cycle when they're compared to other products or services. Um, by doing this, we encourage um, all of our suppliers to be more environmentally friendly and to reduce their carbon footprint. Fun, footprint. So obviously with buying books, um, we could be looking for less packaging when they come, less plastic wrapping and, and, and that kind of thing. So we need to be conscious about the, um, being green and about the things that we consume as part of our education activities. So just to note that schools are free to choose what books, audio books, et cetera, that best suits the needs of um, their school and the learners within the school. And I know um, the presentations earlier have given um, a really big um, kind of um, help as to how you might, might go about that. Um, when you're going out to seek quotes, it's recommended that you seek at least three quotes. And you do not need to buy all from the same supplier. You can purchase from different suppliers de um, depending on what your needs are. And um, one of the, the final things then is that when you issue your request for tender, you're going to set out timelines and deadlines. So deadlines for response and, and timelines that you will get back to your tenderers. And um, you need to make sure that you issue uh, stay to those timelines and deadlines and that you also um, issue the required communications to tenderers. And um, so, for example, when your process is finished, you need to um, inform the winning tenderer, but you also need to inform the, the tenderers that weren't successful at, at that time. Um, and then finally, you need to basically file all your procurement um, documentation and um, um, keep it um, in line with public procurement guidelines. So that's all um, from, from me this evening, and um, we'll now go to the questions and answers. So I can see there was one question there about ordering, must we get three, three quotes? Um, so um, yeah, you're, you're looking for three quotes, but I don't know, it's for each book. It, I, it would be for, what you'd be going out and you'd be buying a number of books from each supplier. So it's for a number of, um, for, for a number of books. Thank you very much, Karen, and uh, thanks to all of the presenters. Um, we do have a few moments now if anybody wants to ask another question. Um, again, you use the Q&A button um, on your screen and just post the question and um, we one of the presenters can ask can answer it. So if anybody has any final questions um, if you want to put those through now. Um, we also have um, on the screen at the moment um, the uh, public library website, Libraries Ireland, 
and we have the section there on services to schools and uh, that uh, the link for that is online on that uh, slide now. Um, the Public Libraries Resource Guide that was referred to earlier is online on that uh, through that link and that provides um, a lot of the information that uh, Dolores and Karen were speaking about earlier um, and suggestions for class book sets, for reading lists, um, for um, a range of, of reading schemes and uh, specialist publishers. Uh, so that's all available on that reading guide. Um, and also those reading guides will be available from your local library service as well. And your local library service provides the supports for schools, supports for schools that were mentioned earlier in the presentations and details of these and the contacts for all library services can also be found on Libraries Ireland 